What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Service Industry Podcast. My name is Matt Smith, and if you are a new listener to the show, I want to say welcome. This is a podcast for people who own local home service companies, and we are all about helping you grow and scale your home service company. And if you're a return guest, welcome back. Good to have you. Um, as you guys always know, uh, I don't charge anything for the podcast. I make literally zero dollars on this thing. And so I'm doing it to provide you guys value and hopefully help you guys grow and scale your business. If you could do the one thing for me in return, which would be leave a review wherever you listen to the show, that would mean the world to me, helps us grow the podcast and um, it just helps us reach more people. Um, and the last thing I have for you is something new going on. So next Wednesday, April 12th, I'm doing a free live Q&A uh, video call. We're allowing 15 people on the call. Um, it'll probably be like an hour to two hour call. And this is just basically where you're gonna be able to hop on a live call with me, ask any questions. I thought this would be a good time of year to do it since most of you guys are getting your spring season going. Um, so you can go in the show notes of this episode. There will be a link that you will see. Click that link, register, um, just type in your email, your phone number. You'll get an email and text message reminder. And that will be for April 12th, which is next Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. Again, only 15 people will be accepted. Um, and I just think it'll be a, a really valuable you know, hour or two for you guys just to pick my brain and go from there. So I would love to see you guys on there. It's 100% Free. I won't be pitching any products or services. Um, we're just going to kind of have fun with it. So click that link in the show notes and we'll go from there. I do have a special guest on today. Um, he's a good friend of mine, Mr. Ryan Scully. How are you doing? Doing, doing well, doing well. Thank you, Matt. I'm yeah, yeah. Definitely excited to be here. I know you had the podcast and I'm uh, was loosely aware of it until, um, I don't know, a year ago and uh, excited to be here. So for sure. Um, so Ryan, you, you probably don't know this, but like, I would say 95% of the episodes are just me on here. Um, so it's pretty rare that I have people on. Um, and for everyone listening, Ryan, I've known for a long time, <laughs> but I would say we got close, like really within like the last 12 months or so. Um, yep. We did a real estate deal together and we'll kind of dive into that uh, later in the episode, but that's kind of what Ryan does. Ryan's a real estate guy and um, I talk to people every single week you know, that reach out from the podcast and, and almost everybody has like the goal of they're building their businesses with the hope that one day they can take that money and pour it into other things that make them money, such as real estate. And so I thought it'd be um, valuable to have you on today and just kind of tell your story and, and kind of we'll go through our deal a little bit. But I just think to start, let's dive into your story a little bit. And how did you even get started doing this whole real estate thing? Yeah, no, perfect. Um, so for me, getting into real estate was uh, coming out of college and uh, having a tremendous amount of um, student loan debt that I, I took on to get through and uh, just looking into that and how to pay it off quickly. And I got into flipping homes. So I uh, purchased a home. I knew I was going to live somewhere and I didn't want to rent something. So I uh, bought a home that needed a little bit of love. I uh, spent a year or two kind of putting it together, you know, making it nice and then hopefully selling it at the end, making a profit and using those proceeds to uh, pay off one or two student loans and then kind of repeat the process, just trying to, to expedite that, that student loan payoff um, just because it was substantial. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's how I got into it. Um, I don't know if that answers your question, but. Yeah, no, for sure. So I, you went to Kettering, which is uh, like an engineering school for those that don't know, super expensive. Um, <laughs> what, what was your like coming out of high school was your was your goal like obviously your goal is to go to college but like was that the focus like was real estate even a thought in your head at that time or was it something you got introduced to yeah good question um so my grandma's always been in real estate in the sales aspect of it not the investing side um, but i did connect so i'll back up so working with her because i used to help her with the real estate signs and i would do lot markers for big subdivisions and i kind of connected mm -hmm. with some investors through doing the lot markers, which was kind of a high school gig that I had. Uh, so that intrigued me because I really looked up to these guys that were doing, you know, 50 or 100 lot investments and they, they seemed like cool guys and that appealed to me, you know, uh, yeah. very, very smart guys. Um, so that's probably, I guess, how I got exposed to this side of real estate investing. But uh, coming out of high school or even out of college, I didn't, I didn't see it 
growing and being a huge thing. It was just, I, I want to live somewhere. I want to pay off these student loans and, and kind of just get those off my back. Uh, yeah, no, that's interesting. Throughout that process, I, I saw an opportunity and just kind of stuck with it. So your first flip was really like a live in fix up as yep. you go kind of thing. Um, how long were you in that house before you sold it? So my very first one uh, was a live. Actually, the first several were live in just because I didn't have the capital <laughs> to buy more yeah. than one house. Um, and uh, and the student loan debt was, was killing my debt to income ratio if I wanted yeah. to finance. So I was kind of locked into doing a, a live in flip. So, okay. um, so yeah, I lived in it. Uh, the first home, gosh, this is going back more than 10 years ago. So I'm, I'm aging myself here, but uh, I think I was there for about a year, maybe a year and a half, um, just kind of learning the process, putting the house together, putting it up. Um, and I didn't make a tremendous amount of money on it. I, I want to say I maybe made $25,000 profit, um, which is a decent deal, but it took me a year and a half. So yeah. 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 No, that's interesting. Um, Cause I think a lot of people are in the position where they feel like we can transition this a little bit, but they feel like they don't have enough money to do real estate deals. Um, is there any solution like to that? Can a person that doesn't have a ton of money somehow get exposed to something real estate related? A hundred percent. I I mean, I didn't have <laughs> any money coming out of school. In fact, I, I had uh, basically six figure debt. So negative money coming out of school and still found a way because I, I leveraged financing for that, obviously. Yeah. Um, but even outside of that, uh, there's a lot of different ways to invest in real estate, um, specifically with low or no money. Um, you can wholesale. I, I don't know if that's something we want to dive too far into, but if you can just find deals and network with people, there's opportunities. Um, it's, it you know, I, I like I, I do like wholesaling. Um, I'm certainly not an expert in it. I've done a couple deals, um, but that is one way. Uh, the other way too is if you want to buy and hold things or flip or do something more traditional and more well known, uh, is you can do owner financing. So that's one way to uh, just work a deal where the seller is going to end up holding the note on the house, and you can negotiate any terms you want if it's a, a private lender that's going to hold the note. So you can say. Okay, I'm not going to put any money down, but I'm going to take your house. And I'm going to make it really nice. I'm going to invest lots of money. Uh, and, and you can really highlight the upside for a seller. Um, but you can get into those deals with with low or no money down. Yeah. So uh, we'll dive into the wholesaling part a little bit because I don't know how many people actually know what that means. Um, can you give just like a quick definition of what like wholesaling means? Sure. It's, it's basically connecting uh, a seller with a buyer in the simplest of terms. Um, so if I'm a seller and for whatever reason, maybe the house is uh, unique or needs some work or you don't want to put it on the MLS for some reason, um, you know, I can strike a deal with, with home seller Joe and say, I will buy your house for $50,000. And then I, if he signs a contract with me, I can take that contract and sell the ability to buy this house for $50,000 to somebody else. Maybe, maybe. Sally wants to buy it for $75,000. She sees the value there that works for her. Now there's a $25,000 profit there that effectively I would take as a wholesaler. Mm -hmm. um, so you're just connecting buyers and sellers in, in those situations. And, and I've both wholesaled a couple um, and then I've also bought some from wholesalers as well. Uh, and, and I do like that business. It's, 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 it's really unique. It's a little bit, um, I don't want to say risky, but uh, it's 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 unique. I'll I'll leave it that that way. It's 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 a grind for sure, um, but there's some guys out there like making really good, like legit money doing it. Oh, there's a tremendous amount of money in wholesaling. It's uh, you you have to know your stuff though. It's usually don't. Well, I guess there are exceptions, but you normally don't start with wholesaling, uh, and if you do, it's after doing a lot of research and learning your mm -hmm. markets, learning your buyers, learning. A, a lot, a lot of education. Uh, <laughs> I would definitely advise you to, to, to know your stuff before getting into wholesaling, but it is one way to get into real estate investing with, you know, no money down. Yeah. Are there opportunities out there to leverage other people's monies that is not a bank? hundred <laughs> percent, right? It's, um, 
banks are great and they, they certainly serve their purpose, but not every deal is ideal for a bank. You know, a bank's mm-hmm. gonna limit their risk, so they're they're not going to take on homes that aren't traditionally not livable. Um, and I leverage private financing quite a bit. In fact, you and I did a deal where uh, where I yeah. was seeking some some money, or I guess that was a little bit different. But um, at the end of the day, um, I work with uh, maybe a handful, maybe half a dozen people that have you know plenty of money that they want to invest and they don't trust the stock market. Right now is probably the ideal time. A lot of people are reaching out and they're like, Ryan, yeah. I want to invest in you as a house flipper. I have some money and um, you can either partner with them or what I like to do is just guarantee them a rate of return on their money. Call it eight or 10 or 12%, you know, on, on an annualized basis, but 12% return on their money. Great. That's awesome, Ryan. I, I can make 12%, which is 1% a month with little risk because you know, Ryan's going to negotiate a house below value. If Ryan defaults on the loan, I get to take over the property, which is already paid off. Right. And Ryan improved it. He negotiated below market value. And now I have this asset that I could ideally sell for a profit, again, if Ryan defaults on the loan. So they like their insurance policy if I default. But the upside is the guaranteed 12%. And, uh, and I'm getting a lot better at, at flipping quickly. So you know, maybe 30, 60, 90 days later, they're they're getting their money back. Um, you can kind of draw that line in the sand, cash out, and then continue to roll that. And I do have guys that do that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's even guys that listen to the show that I talk to on a regular basis that have a lot of money sitting around and they're trying to find stuff to do with it. So whether that be you or people in their area, I mean, there's, there's guys like you all over doing this. Um, the important part is finding like the right people to work with for sure. Yeah, you 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 want to make sure the person doing the flip knows what they're what the flip they're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah for uh, sure. Yeah, you don't want to overpay for a house, be underwater, all the foundation damage is more, and and, and then have this negative business case because those are pretty tough conversations to have. Um, yep. You know, if if you know, because then you're talking about how do we split the loss instead of the profits, right? <laughs> sure, sure. So there's, there's multiple ways to do these deals. So let's just talk about the deal we did last year together a little bit. This will kind of maybe give some people insight because it's pretty interesting. Um, so Ryan texted me, well, let's backtrack a little. Probably the year prior for 12 months, Ryan would send me deals here and there because he knew I was interested um, in getting into real estate. And I passed, I think, on all of them for the most part. I might have looked at a yeah. couple, but we, we, didn't, we didn't pull a trigger on anything. And then he he sends me this one deal. I remember I was I was literally in the shower. I, know, I remember I was at, and I get out and I check my phone. He sends me this house that looks like it's about to fall down. And the only cool part that was like intriguing was it was on twelve acres. Um, and I like that, so I was like, all right, we'll we'll go take a look at it. And I mean, you can you can tell me what you think, but I felt like the house was in poor condition. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So long story short, um, I would have never done the deal by myself as a first flip because of the condition of the house. It was just a lot to take on for a first timer. Um, but basically the way we structured it was, um, my partner and I put up the money, we bought the house, paid cash for it. Um, and then Ryan, which I, I know you don't really do this a lot, but Ryan managed the project. (laughs) Yeah. He managed the project as well as paid for, um, basically all the things that needed to be done in the home. Uh, and then we had our split at the end and it ended up being a home run, but, uh, but that was a, an interesting way. And, and Ryan's a licensed realtor as well. So he also sold the house at the end. Um, so he made money on that as well, but for us, like for my partner and I, it was a win because we were hands off. I mean, I was still out there probably every weekend just looking at updates and what was going on, but um, I didn't really have to be the guy communicating with the contractors and all that. Um, So we got to put up the money for the house. You put up the money for the repairs and you managed the project. I I felt like it worked out pretty good. No, it worked out really well. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's certainly a success story. So, you know, we, and we can run through the numbers if you want, but yeah, I would send Matt houses, I don't know, once a month or every two months. And no, no, because he told me, Brian, I want to get into flipping. Keep me in mind. Okay. So sporadically, I would send him something and it was always no. And then um, this house was kind of off the beaten path. It was outside where I normally buy, but it was uh, acreage. It had some barns and it, it just reminded me of, of 
like an outdoorsy person that likes hunting, like that vibe. And, and yeah. I spoke to Matt, <laughs> obviously. And I remember we walked through it and you're like, yeah, we like it. But what if you stayed on board and helped us with it? Because I, I don't think I initially was thinking yeah. that I would manage the project. But you guys uh, uh, negotiated a, a pretty cool deal that worked for me and obviously worked for you guys to be passive investors. Um, and, and you're right. I mean, that house was, uh, was a home run. I mean, I think on paper it, it was, I, I mean, if you just want to talk profit alone, it was, it was the best house I had last year. So <laughs> yeah, not bad yeah. for your first one, which is kind of funny because it, it, you know, it made it, made it look easy, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a little scary. I mean, you guys know interest rates are much higher than they were a year ago. Um, and so we were kind of listing as those rates were starting to go up. I mean, we were right up against the buzzer as far as that goes. So there's some unknowns of, you know, are people going to start pulling back from buying or, mm -hmm. or whatever, but um, it went really good. So yeah, I think there's always, there's always a reason to believe that something's there's risk, you know, that for the last five years, you know, people are saying we're three months away from a real estate crash and it's like, cool. You know, in the last five years, I've, I don't even know how many houses I've bought, right? Like it's it's just yeah, it's just knowing your numbers, keep grinding, and and you know why others are are calling this, this this crash that's you know inevitably coming. Okay, but I've done a lot in five years. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah, and I'm gonna keep buying. You know, everyone's saying, yeah, you know, if you turn on the news, don't buy. Now's not the time to buy. You know, it. Okay. Well, I have one under contract, and actually, well, I'm listing one technically tomorrow so yep um but um would you say the market's still as hot as it was a year ago n no no i don't think so um but i think people are a little bit more comfortable with the the interest rates so initially when everyone was used to two and a half three and a half percent and then it went to five it was like holy cow and now that it's hovering at six and change and it's yeah. been there for a while. I think people are thinking, okay, this is the new norm and they're more comfortable with that. Um, and lately, any house that I've offered on, or obviously, like you said, I'm a licensed agent, uh, that clients have offered on, I mean, we're in multiple offers. We're, we're cash, we're appraisal guarantees, lack of contingency. I mean, we're back into that world uh, and there's so little inventory uh, right now. So um, anything that's, that's nice is, is getting a ton of exposure. Yeah. Yeah. No, for sure. Um, so you do a lot of flips, but you also do a lot of rental stuff. Yeah. So, uh, initially, like I said, I, I was doing the flips. This is 10 years ago Yeah. and I flipped a number of homes, paid off all my student loans. And, uh, and then I wanted to stay in the real estate investing world. And I was looking more for, um, I'm going to try not to go off on a tangent. I know whenever you and I get together, I think I'm talking yeah. about one thing and we end up somewhere else. Oh, you're but, fine, dude. Um, I was looking more for that residual income, uh, you know, mailbox money or, or passive income or whatever yeah. cliche name you want to call it. Uh, so I looked into rentals. Um, and so for a number of years, I was buying rental properties, uh, fixing them up and renting them out. So now, you know, monthly I have a steady stream of income coming in. Um, so I, I did do rentals for a long time and, uh, and well, still do, you know, I have, um, I guess I'll call it 11 rental houses right now. And uh, I, I definitely like that, that uh, investment strategy. Um, yeah. Flipping is more exciting. You know, rentals are, are kind of boring, I guess, once you set it and forget it. But uh, to buy and hold a rental house for 15 years, 20 years, and have that uh, monthly cash flow and then the, the equity position long term and, you know, assuming the market continues to increase, increase, you know, it's just, it's a really good method to, uh, diversify, I guess, your portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's cool. And, and yours, you're split up a little bit, um, where you do a lot of single family stuff, like in our neck of the woods, but you also have college rentals, um, <laughs> yep. which, which is interesting for those of you guys that don't know, like the, uh, the college houses he has are actually the college he went to. And that college is not in a great area. It's in Flint. Um, <laughs> so you, were able to pick those houses up pretty cheap, but they cash flow really well because all these students kind of you know bunk in there together. Yeah, so getting into buying and holding properties again didn't have a ton of cash, you know. So 
I'm looking at the, the less expensive homes. Uh, and then I'm looking at, well, you know, when I was going to Kettering, I know what rent was there. You know, mm-hmm. I do, I punch the numbers. I'm like, there's an opportunity here, you know, and assuming Kettering is not moving out of the area anytime soon. Right. There's an opportunity here, you know, and I, then eventually after a couple weeks or months, this house popped up. That was the perfect rental house. I'm like, get the sign. Let's go. You know, and I, yeah. being a licensed agent, I got in same day, uh, made the offer, actually knew the listing agents and leveraged that and, and things worked out really well, placed those tenants and, uh, well, it had to had to update the house quite a bit, but place those tenants, and then I just kind of copy and pasted that with uh, the college rentals for. Um, well, I guess I've owned nine, nine or nine or ten of them uh, throughout the last five or so years, and uh, I definitely like that business model. It's it's by far the best cash flowing. Um, it is in a little bit of a weird area where. That block is nice because of the school and they do a really good job. Um, but you know, you go any more than a block and it's, it's a rough neighborhood. You're, you're right. You know, it, it yeah. just is. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm very passionate about the school. I, I have Kettering to thank for a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of my knowledge and successes. And, um, I do really enjoy providing quality housing to the, the students and being able to connect with them and being an advocate for, uh, their success too. And it's just different than, Joe Schmo landlord in Colorado that mm-hmm. owns some houses in Flint. Like I just, I take a little bit of a different approach to that. And, uh, and I do find that rewarding. Um, I do have to give credit to, I did team up with another investor uh, on those. You know, as I was buying up properties there, I noticed he was, and I, I said, well, you know, kind of rather than be competition for each other, let's just team up. And, and that's worked out extremely well. I don't know that I would advise everyone to jump into a partnership, um, but that's worked out super, super well. So uh, I do want to give a little shout out to Ryan and Stephanie there too. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, that's like, um, I know we had talked about maybe me buying one of those for me last year and it didn't happen. But um, the cool thing is, is like, I feel like, especially since we've gotten a little bit closer, like I've been able to really like in forever, I've been like, Oh, I want rental properties. Um, but Obviously, like the best return on your money will probably always be your business as long as it's like doing well. Um, sure. And so just for me, like at the point I'm in right now, like we've said, like that's it's hard for me to justify putting a bunch of money like in real estate rentals that get whatever the percent return is versus my business right now. Um, and that's not right or wrong. Uh, but I've been thankful that I've kind of gotten to learn both sides of, you know, and, and really realize like, Oh, maybe I'm more into the flipping side of things rather than the, the, you know, the rental side of things or whatever the case is. Um, as like a licensed agent, what would you say your, like, how much has networking come into play when it comes to finding deals? Cause like it's a, a just for any realtor, like, I don't know, dude, but I, most realtors are starving. Like we all know that. Like, <laughs> There's, there's very few that are like absolutely crushing. So real, especially right now in this market, cause there's just not a lot of houses for sale. Um, what would you say, like, how are you finding your deals, um, in a market like this where it's hard to find deals? Well, let me touch a little bit on, on your previous comment about pouring money into the business, right? If you're getting $2 for every dollar you put into your business, yeah, continue doing that. That's, that's a yeah. good deal, right? <laughs> like making five cents for every dollar on a rental property is not exciting. Uh, that being said, I think diversifying uh, and looking outside of just, just the one bag, if you invest all your money here and, and yeah. pretend it's Blockbuster, right? Pretend you invest all your money in Blockbuster, which was crushing it 30 years ago, great. Mm-hmm. But Blockbuster is not crushing it anymore. So I, I do think yeah. as you find your successes, taking out some of that money and putting it somewhere else is, is a good practice. Yeah, for um, sure. So, and that's where I look to real estate too. And, and obviously I'm very heavy into real estate, but even in, within my uh, portfolio, there's a term um, called portfolio architecture. And it's kind of how you structure your, well, your whole portfolio. For me, it's just real estate. Um, mm-hmm. well, I guess that's not true either because I do have a 401k and such, but uh, you know, I, I want my buckets to be pretty evenly balanced. So if, if, if Kettering moved, well, my 10 houses I have at Kettering aren't worth a whole lot and they're not cash flowing a whole lot. Well, thank God I had some houses in, 
and Fenton, yeah. another local city nearby, you know, or, or just something like that. Um, yep. So I do want to touch a little bit on that is, is it is important to diversify. So anyhow, going back to your question about networking, networking for me is huge. I, I think um, as much as I'm a huge advocate for learning, you know, watch every YouTube video, read every book, just as much as I preach that when people ask me for advice, networking, you know, it's absolutely huge, even if they're not in your industry. Um, you know, even I saw Matt Smith making moves and I'm like, I want to go back and talk to that guy because we were close in high school. And then, you know, yeah. I didn't talk to you for, for a handful of years and, and now we're, we're best buds again. And, um, you know, I, I, I think it's just you kind of shaking things up and all of a sudden with all your activity, you popped up in my news feed and I'm like, oh yeah, Matt Smith, him and I should connect. So I, I like that opportunity. Um, but beyond that, there's so much education out there. There's so many people. I, I have so much uh, I have to give a lot of a lot of credit to uh, networking or my network um, for finding opportunities, having the courage to, to tackle those. Um, you know, because you're re- out- you're like, you're really good at it. Like, I I don't know if you even know this, but I if someone were to ask me like, what's the strength of Ryan's? I would say just like you're very connected to people. Um, like, it's pretty rare that I might ask you about someone and you don't at minimum know who they are. You know what I mean? <laughs> Um, or, or even like, uh, you know, people that have like, like my cousin, who's very well, uh, has a good network, like has asked me about you. Like you just are good at connecting with other people, even if it's on a surface level or whatever, um, uh, which is something like I really want to get better at. Um, so that's why I asked you that question. Cause I think that's like such an undervalued skill set that so many people like I did forever. Like I, I didn't care about networking at all, but like now it's like top priority for me. Like, I think it's to be able to know the right people and for those people to know you and trust you and know you're the real deal is like so many new opportunities come from that. Um, and I, I do, I think you're really good at that. I appreciate that. It's absolutely a, a priority for me is, is to network and um, you know, from the simplest things of agreeing to anyone that wants to have lunch and, and quote unquote, pick my brain. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, I, I know a lot of investors that, that won't do that. You know, they said, unless they're bringing value to the table, I'm not meeting with them. Okay. Well, who knows what value they're going to bring. They're not going to know what you need. You know, if yeah. it, you know, you, unless you talk to them, you don't know what their skill set is and, and you don't have that dialogue. It's just, it's a weird stance for me to take. Um, and at the same time, I credit my network to, to a lot of my success. So it's like, I want to do the same thing. I want to be approachable. Uh, there's a term called, um, barrel of monkeys theory where you're both reaching up and reaching down you know you're still reaching up Mm. to have someone encourage you and build you up at the same time don't forget that you know that somebody you got to be that somebody for someone else you know and i i definitely live by that um but i credit so much to networking you know i joined a golf i'm not even good at golf but i joined the golf league to meet more people i go to every lunch i can i you know even though it's uncomfortable i go do a lot of meetings and meetups where you walk in and it's kind of awkward and all the little clicky groups are everywhere. It's just go meet people. I, I so, 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 I mean, every opportunity to network, just do it, no matter how big or small it is. Um, and at the same time, because you asked about real estate, this is when I go off mm-hmm. on a tangent, but you're good, dude. Uh, like, I think building those relationships are key. Like, if there's a multiple offer situation on a house and you have uh, a great track record of first and foremost, but a good relationship with that agent, good or bad, they're probably going to be motivated to, hey, Ryan gets his stuff done. He's yep. a straight shooter. We can close quick. Like you build that credibility and you have that relationship with that agent. Well, now you're better representing your clients. And at the same time, they want to work with you. And at the end of the day, they're going to get the deal done. It's, it's just knowing people and building that trust. I mean, there's, there's a ton of examples. So I'm going to, I'm going to, re- prevent myself from going into too many examples, but it's, it's so, so big. Just say yes to every opportunity, even this podcast. Hey, Ryan, you want to do a podcast? Sure. This is yeah. my first or arguably my second podcast ever. Sure. Sign me up. It's not going to be <laughs> the prettiest, but I want to be here. Who knows who's going to reach out and say, Hey, Ryan, I had some questions about yep. this property. I'd love to help you. Hey, Ryan, I've got some money. I want to move it. Cool. Let me tell you some 
some of my experiences or they want to invest in me, sure, let's talk or whatever it is, just say yes to every opportunity. Um, and, uh, and, and don't obsess about needing everything to be perfect and be prepared and, and it's just say yes, 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 meet people. And, uh, I think you'll, you'll see the, the rewards, uh, very quickly. Yeah. Cause I think like something I always tell people is like, uh, you know, a lot of these guys, I mean, there are some realtors that listen to the show and stuff, but like, let's say it's a roofing company. Like when somebody thinks of your name, like when someone like thinks of Ryan Scully, they think of like real estate investing, flipping houses, selling houses, like you are the real estate guy. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so like to an extent that's building a, a personal brand, even on a local basis, you know, it's not like you have this, this huge social media following across the, the whole country and, and whatever, but like in our, in our area, like you are the real estate guy, like people know you as that. And like, I think everybody listening, you have to be, you have to identify, like people have to identify you with the business that you own. So you have to be all in on that thing because that's how you build the trust. Like if Ryan's like, oh, I'm the real estate guy, but I'm also the plumber guy, but I'm also the whatever. Um, I, I think a lot of that trust goes away and you kind of become a, a lot of nothing. You know what I mean? Um, comes to a networking standpoint. Yeah. I was on a coaching call last week with a guy and, and that was something we were talking about was him really beginning to network and like um, he's got a, a huge business, but like he doesn't network at all. And I was like, dude, you're like, you need to be the go-to guy for all these big players in town. Um, and so, yeah. Yeah. But building your personal brand is, is gigantic, right? Like if I think who's I'm trying to relate it and, and I'm not necessarily totally in your space, but if I think I, like I have a property that has a flat roof and I think flat roofs, I have a name that comes to mind because yep. of course they do a lot of other things, but they're the flat roof guru and they want everyone to know it cool. That, that's how they, you know, that's how they get a lot of their business and uh, commercial lawn mowing company. You know, I do a, a ton of commercial or snow plow. Like you, you think of guys that are big scale, they have a brand. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I'll be a little bit critical myself is yeah, I'm the real estate guy, hundred percent through and through. And every time I see someone out to dinner, they're like, Oh, real estate. We talk real estate, you know, and I'm so, so passionate about real estate, but it's like, are you the, the, the wholesaler guy or the, buys dumpy houses guy or sells mm. million dollar lakefront hot guy. Like what is your brand? And it's like, and I've struggled with that. And at the end of the day, I kind of thrive with, I'm all of it. You know, I'm everything real estate. I can, you want to talk to me about wholesaling? Let's go. You, know, you want to talk to me about, you know, how to craft a good listing video? Let's go. You know, let's talk about it. You know, want to talk, can I remove this wall? Yep. I've done dozens of wall removals. Let's talk about how to do that. Mm -hmm. I think being able to, to be an art or, to, to, to know a lot about all facets of your business is, is huge. Um, so, so anyhow, I'm trying to relate that, that back to the home services, but if you, if you build a brand, um, I'll use the flat roof example, your phone's going to ring. Yeah. You know, if you're the plumbing guy, he always gets it done. You know, even if you're 50 bucks more, some people are hundred bucks or 200 bucks more. Some people just want to call and know that it's taken care of and you don't have to babysit. Uh, and, and if you're that guy, Hey, this guy gets it done. Your phone's going to ring. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, no, for sure. That's cool. So where can, uh, where can people find you if, uh, if they have questions or maybe they're interested in putting their money somewhere or, or whatever? Yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, you'll, you'll post this maybe in the description. We can put my, my phone number there or yep. connect it to my Facebook. Uh, those are the two best ways, no doubt about it. I'd love to chat. Um, it, any questions I'd love to connect, whether we're in the same business, whether you want to do anything in real estate, I, I'm all ears. Let's talk. Okay, cool. I will put Ryan's information in the show notes below. Um, you have any last words of encouragement that you could give somebody that is uh, either getting ready to do this, currently doing this, or has a dream to do this in the future? It just <laughs> like we kind of talked about, always be learning. I say that all the time. Always be learning. I don't care if it's, well, like I said, videos or books on tape or podcasts. Just always have that thirst every single day when you're taking a shower, maybe push play on Spotify and listen to a podcast. Just always just be that sponge because you never know where that tidbit's going to come from and, and it's going to be your breakthrough tidbit. Yep. So, and then beyond that networking, um, you know, with the internet, it's so easy to connect and find people and uh, definitely leverage that. 
Cool, man. Awesome. Well, thanks for being on. And guys, don't forget to go register for April 12th, the Q&A. Uh, that link is in the show notes. And I will see you guys on the next episode. Take care, Ryan. All right. Thank you, Matt. Appreciate it. Take care, guys.